What's up, guys? Welcome to the Toxic Vault. And today, I'm going to talk about one of my heroes. A lot on the Toxic Vault, I'm going to talk about some of the influences that I had through rock and roll. But this guy meant a lot to me. I got a chance to meet him, and I got the chance to know him. The first time I ever heard Ronnie James Dio was Rainbow. One of my favorite records ever in the world is Long Live Rock and Roll. My favorite song on the planet. If you ask me, Zetro, what is the ultimate heavy metal song to you is Kill the King of Long Live Rock and Roll. It's got everything to it. Let me know what you think. Leave it in the comments what you think about that. It's mine. It's classic. It's got everything in it. It's got great guitars, awesome vocals, great lyrical content, Great solos, keyboard, and guitar. I mean, the song has everything. And I think that's where he first grabbed me. And because I listened to harder rock even at an early age, I was aware of him. But I really didn't get to really appreciate him until he joined Black Sabbath and he did the Heaven and Hell record and even Mob Rules. But to go back to Heaven and Hell itself... Every song is a damn hit on that record to me. Every song is an anthem, and I just love everything he did on that record. I remember going to, ha, 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 look at that, my first T-shirt, Zetro's Toxic Vault. Be the first one on your block to have it. Go to greyhavenmedia.net to get yours. Day on the Green, which was a huge concert in the Bay Area where they would have so many bands, and I think it was Molly Hatchet and 38 Special in Black Sabbath and Heart and Lover Boy and all these bands and they really didn't fit the bill. But man, I was there to see Ronnie and the boys and it was just, uh, I can remember that so well. And then within the next year, they had released Mob Rules and uh, what an amazing record Mob Rules is. Right, left off, right where to me, where Heaven and Hell left off and was so heavy and such an influential record if you listen to a lot of the music today in any heavy metal, there's a lot of those two records and a lot of people's musical influences on their own stuff. And that goes with every genre of, of heavy metal. And um, after that, he went on his own. He went and did his own stuff. Uh, Holy Diver was a monumental uh, debut record for somebody. I saw his first concert ever at the Antioch Concert Barn. That's what I was told anyway. It was the first concert that he ever played as Dio in the band. It was him and Jimmy Bain and Vivian Campbell and and Vivian and Vinny Apice at that time. I don't remember who the keyboard player was. Maybe it was Claude Schnell. Maybe it wasn't so early on on them. And then the follow-up to that, The Last in Line, is basically my favorite Dio solo record. To me, that record just nails it. And he went on through his his solo career uh, and, and, and flourished and played huge festivals all over the place. But what, in 1992, what was cool to me is Exodus got to open for Black Sabbath, getting back together after Dio had done all of his solo stuff, and they did a record called Dehumanizer. And we were fortunate enough to get on a 32-date tour across the United States. And myself and the rest of the guys in the band and crew became very, very, very good friends with Ronnie. And uh, we hung out with him pretty much every night after the the tour after the show was over we always went to the bars and hung out and he became a very 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 good friend of mine and i and i miss the guy every day i i listen to his music and just think how amazing now when you listen back i mean it was amazing when it came out but hey i want to thank all of you guys for subscribing to my channel but i also got to pump my own band have you gone and subscribed to the exodus youtube channel we'll go over there right now and subscribe to listen back uh it's just so 
amazing. Tell me what you think. I mean, what do you guys think? You know, was Dio such an influence for you? Is he a big metal uh, icon for you as, as he was for me? I mean, he was one of the monsters of rock in my eyes in the beginning, you know. And I kept in touch with him up until, you know, his passing in 2010, unfortunately. But I know that they're... Uh, they do a, a tribute band with, I think, the rest of the members of his band. It's called Dio Disciples. And they do go around and, and, and play in the memory of Ronnie. And there's so many of us, like when we do Metal Allegiance, there's always a Dio song or something from his, his repertoire in the um, set with Metal Allegiance. And it just goes to show the icon that the guy is, even still today, and how many people that he touched I mean when you go to any of the festivals there's not a battle jacket that doesn't have Dio on the back man you see that everywhere you go and hats off to all you fuckers who do so hats off horns up to Dio if you like what you hear on my show hit the button and subscribe right there talk to you guys soon <laughs>